Despite the fact that the Hippodamian system of urban planning, that is, a regular orthogonal city planning system, was put in place extensively after the 4th century BC, very often newly developed cities did not adopt the system of planning. The city of Delos, which was heavily urbanized during the 2nd century BC, is a prime example of a newly developed city that does not adopt a regular orthogonal city plan. Delos, home to the sanctuary of Apollo since the 7th century BC, became an important port in the 2nd and 1st centuries BC, a trading point during Rome's conquest of the Greek East. In 167 BC, Romans granted the port of Delos duty-free status and turned it into a commercial base, connecting the eastern and western Mediterranean. The island became a free trade commercial base under nominal Athenian supervision, but essentially under Roman rule. The result of this economic development was an unprecedented population increase and, by consequence, an accelerated urbanization attested by the irregular formation of new neighborhoods and harbor facilities and the redevelopment of existing urban and harbor areas of the island. The reasons for which a regular orthogonal city planning system was not employed on Delos were not only related to the rapid nature of its development, but also the particular geographical location, geomorphological particularities of the island, as well as the fact that it was an emporium, that is, a trading port. The most important factor for the development of the city seems to have been the exploitation of its coastline and intensification of harbour infrastructure. Instead of devising the new areas of the city in accordance to a rigid orthogonal plan, the new residents thus created neighbourhoods around the island's commercial centres and natural harbours in order to accommodate the growing emporium of the port city and followed the geomorphology of the island in their planning. For example, two new neighbourhoods, the Stadion and North Districts, were created next to two natural harbours. It was more important to be able to access these areas from the sea than to create a homogeneous plan of the city. We noticed the accessibility of the harbour of the North District as we approached Delos from the north. In fact, this harbour is a better choice when coming from the north, say, from Halkis and facing south winds, which are not as often, but really powerful when they occur. Furthermore, whereas the layout of the new neighborhoods of Delos is relatively regular, in that they present some parallel streets and orthogonal insulae or city blocks, these are not regularly shaped. The size of the insulae in these neighborhoods varies. It is the geomorphological particularities of these areas, pre-existing buildings, and relation to the harbor area that dictate the street grid. For example, the insulae of the stadium district are regularly placed next to the retaining wall of the pre-existing stadium on the west side, but their size varies on the east side as they follow an irregular street that leads to the maritime front of the neighborhood to the east. Regardless as to whether the Hippodamian system was followed or not, by the 2nd century BC, when Delos was rapidly developed, city planning took into account issues of water management and hygiene. In Delos, for example, we see underneath the ancient street level in the irregular street grid of the city an extensive steward system that directs the wastewater of the houses outside the city. Waste from the latrines of each house is directed to this steward system. Water is essential for life in the city and residents made sure to take advantage of the resources available to them. The residents of the island of Delos ensured that the water from the major water source of the island, the Inopos source, was channeled into a dam originally built in the 4th century BC, which was in the Roman period connected to an aqueduct, feeding the growing number of baths that clustered around the main harbour of the island at this time. The residents of Delos also built an impressive recharge well, which stored groundwater in order to increase the amount of available water during arid periods. Furthermore, Almost each house on Delos was equipped by a large cistern cut into the ground and located underneath the courtyard of the house, which stored rainwater. In short, residents were building their city and houses according to principles of sustainable design regarding water management. A city develops around three gravitational points, the religious, political administrative and commercial points. 
these three points of convergence usually form the center of a city, but various reasons may lead to such centers being at the borders of a settlement. We see this clearly on Delos, where the marketplace is clustered around the sanctuary of Apollo and accompanying administrative and political buildings, and were located next to the area of the main harbor at the west maritime border and facade of the city. But while religious, political and commercial activities may concentrate and form the center of a city, even located at the borders of the settlement, there are various smaller clusters of activity within the city that created smaller gravitational points. On Delos, for example, the development of new neighborhoods next to natural harbors pulled the gravity of the city center at the main harbor area to these areas at the northeast and northwest. The commercial activity evidenced in this neighborhood shows clearly the consequence that the operation of the small harbors had on them. They effectively operated as smaller gravitational points that diffused the centralized commercial activity of the emporium within the city. Whether following the Hippodamian system or not, ancient Greek and Roman cities after the 4th century BC were designed according to what we will today regard as principles of sustainable design. They were designed to be self-sufficient in water management and hygienic in waste disposal. A city need not have assumed a regular orthogonal planning system in order to service its functions and needs. The geographical location and geomorphological particularities of a site as well as its economic and political circumstances, greatly determined decisions regarding its urban form. Delos, for example, grew rapidly during the 2nd and 1st centuries BC because it became a major trading point, an emporium. It is in fact its function as an emporium that greatly defined its urban development and shaped its urban form.